All right, what is going on, people of YouTube? It is currently 23 hours since we have last filled up the loop with the EK super cleaner clean thing. You can still see it turned a really dark bluish green color and apparently I did some research that is dissolved um, like copper oxide copper salts it's uh, something with copper and that would make sense considering the internal of this more radiator is copper so all that is just dissolved uh, copper particulate kind of floating around in there um, hopefully it means it's cleaned I guess right or something because the uh, cleaner that we put in here is a non acidic cleaner it's a detergent based cleaner right and then we'll go up into the water block and you can see it's just a nice blue liquid color kind of going through it so at this point we're going to shut down the computer and uh, we'll do our flush real quick I'll flush it with probably a whole gallon of distilled water and then the little birdie last night dropped off this guy if you guys aren't familiar with these this is the Optimus V3 Intel block. So we're, we're, we're going to be replacing this EK Velocity 2 block with the Optimus block. One reason is this is just a better block. Um, it performs better. Even though the Velocity 2 looks fantastic with the light and the nickel, um, the issue I don't like with it is when I want to replace the thermal paste on it, I have to literally take the entire motherboard out um, to replace it. So I don't like that. As for the Optimus block, it has screws on the front, so all I'd have to do is take those off and then pull the block off um, to replace thermal paste instead of having to literally disassemble my entire PC. So, we're gonna drain it, I'll record that, and then I'm gonna take this entire PC apart and replace the block. And um, I might record some of it, but I'm not gonna record the entire thing because that's gonna take way too long. And then, uh, yeah, we'll come back with the uh, other part of the, uh, the super flush part. So, that's all we got left. So, without further ado, let's get started. We don't want that. Put the hose in there. Just like that. Alright, I'll connect that. Nice. And then, uh, yeah. Alright, everyone. So, all I'm gonna do is just unscrew this quick disconnect off the end of this hose. We'll keep it nice and high. Raised up in the air so nothing happens. So you can see the quick disconnect. You back off this guy and you just pull it off, and it should start automatically draining. Okay, cool. And now I'm just going to fill it up um, with some just normal distilled water. And we will fill it once with distilled water, drain it, and then I'll add the uh, super flush in. All right, so we're going to run it one more time. We're going to refill the loop. And uh, yeah, refill it one more time. Oh, nice. You just want to make sure those pumps don't run dry. Thankfully, due to the uh, kind of lubricity effects of the uh, cleaning solution we have in there, um, filling it like this is not going to cause any issues. Now, if you hear any grinding sounds or like squeaky sounds or high pitched squeal, that means that ceramic bearing in your uh, your fans are grinding and it needs some water ASAP because it's self lubricating. Alright, we'll just run that real quick. Turn the power back on one more time. Nice ass shot. Oh. 
super bubbly. All that detergent's in there. We'll let that settle for a sec. And once that settles, we'll continue filling, and then we'll drain it. All right, we got the reservoir filled up enough to where, just let it circulate real quick, make sure it's all good. Yeah, it's real bubbly. All right, good enough for me. We'll call it there. And we'll drain the loop one more time. And, uh, yeah. Well, I guess reconnect this hose for now. Um, but now it's time to disassemble the PC. All right, everyone, we have reassembled the PC with the brand new Optimus V3 
block. I'm not sure if you guys can see it in there. No RGB. Um, but yeah, we got all the hoses rerouted. I um, had to make some adjustments because the holes on the Optimus block were slightly different from the holes on the EK block. So I had to make uh, two new tubes, had to get a new one, and then cut the other one um, for them to fit. So, but yeah, we got everything plugged back in. I'm not going to do a uh, leak test because I honestly, I really, I just trust the uh, fittings. Uh, do that at your own discretion. Um, I'm pretty confident in my work. And uh, yeah, anyway, moving on. So the second part of the leak test, it wants you to run uh, EK cryofuel. It wants you to mix it up with uh, 1,000 to... 2,750 milliliters of distilled water. This is just roughly like about three liters. So um, we will mix in here as directed. It does have a child lid on it, so it's a pain in the ass to open. And then this is a pain in the ass to open as well, so I'd recommend using like a knife and just There we go, and we will do a pour. Nice. We will dispose of this. We'll give the solution a mix. There you go. A nice homogenized liquid cooling solution. So I am going to deviate from the instructions a little bit. It tells you to um, it tells you to put this in here for 15 minutes, flush it, and then do it again. Um, but my loop, since I've used a more, takes about three liters of water. So because of that, we're just going to do one um, flush and just have this run in there for 24 hours. Then I'll run about three or four gallons of distilled water to get any sort of remnant out. And then, um, yeah, we'll rock and roll with uh, filling it up one last time. So let's, uh, let's add the super flush mix to the loop. There we go. Had to prime the pumps. Nice. Yeah, so we, uh, we had to prime the pumps the first time. You saw me like kind of squeeze on the hoses, try to get some water in there. You don't want them to run dry. So that's why I turned it off as soon as I noticed there wasn't any water going in there. Um, yeah. I'll just kind of let this run for probably 24 hours. Um, maybe less. We might only run it for like eight. We'll see. Um, I'll let you guys know. All right, what is up everyone? Is the next day, so it's been 24 hours with the super flush flowing in the system. You can see the reservoir is pretty clear. Uh, maybe it have, maybe it might have like a very slight yellowish hue to it. This is the remainder of the super flush solution I have. So this whole system takes about just under three liters of uh, liquid. So we're about to drain it and start uh, flushing with some distilled water, and then we'll put in the liquid uh, Mutopia. And uh, yeah, this is how I flush my Mora. So I've already flushed it once, so you guys kind of know how that works. I'm not going to re-record re it again, but um, yeah, I'm going to flush it and uh, keep you guys posted. What is going on, people of YouTube? I'm in the middle of editing this Mora 3420 Super Flush video, and I realized I did the final flush and then never recorded like the final results. So 
that's my bad. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So computer, there's the Mora. And then uh, let me position the camera so you can kind of see the jet plate. Uh, see, it looks really bad from right here, but it looks pretty clean from what it was before. And then the reservoir looks like this. It's a little cloudy. Um, so I'll probably have to flush it one more time. I just noticed it was cloudy when I was looking at it. You can kind of see there's some sort of fog or particulate moving around in there. But if we focus on the bottom part where it was, it looks pretty freaking good. Let me see if I can position this better. Yeah. It does not look bad at all. Let's see if I can position it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, would I recommend it? I probably would. It seemed to do a really good job. It seemed to be pretty powerful. Um, and uh, the system does not have any microbial growth. Um, so yeah, I'd give it a shot if you guys have it. Thanks for watching.